Welcome to Verbal Pick Radio, where we give you a verbal image of life, and we are every day. People like to welcome you all to the show. Today we're going to discuss this shooting that took place in Kenosha, Wisconsin, by a 17-year-old young white kid. Now, I'm saying allegedly because uh, it hasn't came out publicly yet, but this is what's trending on, on Twitter, and they also has this picture up, so... We, we're getting ready to roll with that. And to help me further it, uh, further along into the program, I have none other than uh, Brother Marcus Mudd of A-Tone Productions, a Brother Mark, what's going on, bruh? Peace, God. What's happening? Oh, you got it, God. We just sitting in here uh, going over the situation on how and why a young 17 year old one purchased a rifle like the one he had and the purpose of him going to a protest to shoot the protesters who trained that type of mindset to do such a deed you know it, it it's 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 ridiculous in a sense because you would think that this young man has his whole life ahead of him. So why would he even want to participate in something that can take his whole future away? You know, it's, it's absurd to me, but this thing is happening every day. You know, yes, sir. What, 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 what's your take on it? And then we'll get into Le- LeBron James comment. But who or where is this ideology coming from? It's coming from their parents. It came from their parents, bro, you know. 17 years old, like you said, that's not even out of high school yet. So, and at that age, you're feeling so invincible. You're not thinking about what you just mentioned your whole life ahead of you. So a misguided individual like that is perfect for radicalization, to be radicalized and to commit acts such as this. Right. And and the sad part about it is him being 17 years old in America today, you can't tell me he hasn't ran across any black or brown children uh, playing with or interacting with you know, on a, not a daily basis, at least monthly. And, and he, and you're trying to say that in all your dealings, you haven't met any black or brown person with substance. I, it's hard for me to believe, you know? And now this takes me to, uh, a lecture I heard Mr. Farrakhan do, uh, when he went to the prison, he was uh, speaking at a, a prison in Illinois. And he said that injustice will breed insanity. Where there's no justice, the people, and I'm paraphrasing this though, but where there's no justice, people tend to lose it. And could that be the reason why LeBron... James stated the other day in in dealing with the shooting of uh of Jacob uh Blake and that's where the the young guy white guy 17 years old shot two uh protesters and and killed two but could that be the reason why LeBron James stated that black people are afraid the the fact that you know we don't know what to do and 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 now and, and now uh uh Chaos is starting to seep in, and now people are starting to be afraid. Well, I have to call your phrase on that one, brother, and saying that we should be careful about listening to celebrities. Right. Because celebrities, even though LeBron has proven to be one who's, who, who uh, has value, to the progress that we are embarking on, attempting to embark on. And uh, he's shown that 
he's a sincere brother when it comes to that, but many of our celebrity brothers and sisters are, sisters are, are uh, connected, are tied to our oppressor's will in one form or another. And so for him to get on television and speak for us all as if he was speaking for us all and just offer a repetitive cadence of how afraid and scared we are at a time that we can't, that we shouldn't be, and that we can't afford to be, is just kind of suspect to me. But I love the brother and, you know, I appreciate his positivity. Right, because see, what it led me to believe is that in watching the the RNC convention the other day, and I saw Herschel walk on there and Tim Scott and whatnot, it kind of led me to believe that that some black people are saying, "Look, you can't beat them, join them. Uh, I, I'm afraid, so I might as well get with what they seem as the winning team and do their bidding just for survival purposes." You know, like. W- we haven't figured out a way how to get out from under this thing. So let me just become a tool and, 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 and get down with, with who they fear that can protect them. I don't know. That's because they are already down with them. So, and they are already drawn out. These celebrities, they are drawn out of the community and then uh, placed in front of us. So they are already in a quote unquote winning position. So the only thing I can see is that they are commissioned to push uh, uh, a certain detail of their uh, agenda. If you understand what I'm saying, right? Uh, Right. Yeah. At a certain time, when certain things happen, we need you to say certain things. Right in order for our agenda to move forward in a certain way. Right. 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 Exactly. And and it's like they it's like a dog whistle or they have them on call. And it's like, okay, you up next, get out there and say this, uh, because um, you know, I, I flipped the bill for your success. You riding you riding on my money. You riding the wave. You ride the the, the you, your wave of your success and, and my money is the surfboard. So when I call you out here to do my bidding, then you need to respond. Right. You know, and they do. And and, and, and and they do. <laughs> it's sad. But that's where we at now. So now I had a conversation with a good friend of mine. And he was telling me that, man, the last thing that we want as black people at this stage is a civil war because we're not ready. You, 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 do you believe that to be true? What does he mean by a civil war between black on black? Because that's already going on. Right. He's talking it? about a civil war of the United States of America. Right. That doesn't involve us except that we will be the scapegoats. If that's what he mean, right. you know, we're not ready for anything. We not and I was just about to say, they have a playbook. That's what we mess up at. We don't have an agenda, we don't have a playbook, a plan, we don't have a vision, we don't even think about it. The best of us are trying to figure out how they can get to the next check. Right. Well or uh-huh. or or what to do when a a uh, police officer pull you over. Oh yes. You know we we trying to figure out the proper response. You know, do we put both our hands out the window? Uh, do we challenge him to let him know that we know the law and that might make him afraid to, you know, shoot or kill us because we know our grounds, or that sometimes that might anger anger him and then he shoot us anyway. Well, we <clears throat> there's a there's a, a certain procedure that I would recommend for us to take when we're in these situations, and by all means, have something in your mind. Look at what's going on. Let's not be reactors. Let's be proactors. 
and let it be responders because all of this reacting is getting us killed faster and faster. But that's, but but that's see in, in, in some way, brother. Uh, it seemed psychotic, right? And I'm gonna tell you why. When you young and you on the playground, right? We fighting each other, and I ain't no punk. And another black person run up on me. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. And you talk this. Even 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 your parents, your mom, they hit you. You better hit them back. You don't run from nobody, right? So that's in the back of your mind. Then when the police come, it's, then they say, okay, but only but, you know, when the police come, then do this, this, but they go in between rows and they forget, like, oh, you know, and it's like they spazzing out. You know, I'm, I, yeah, y'all telling me to jump on my brother, but then when this, when the, when the, when the cop come, I got, I have to behave this way because he got a gun and these, the youth is, this, they confused. How, 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 uh-huh. No, but I say, how do we, how do we unconfuse them? Well, I mean, it's, it's not nothing to be confused about. You have to think, like you said, it seems psychotic, but it's not psychotic. Mm-hmm. What's psychotic is the society, and if we don't adjust to that psych- psychosis, then we are psychotic. Mm-hmm. If we feel like we could be captives in a land that was once very strange to us, and we've been hit in the head and knocked to sleep. We wake up and we're in a foreign land behind enemy lines, and we think we're just gonna carry on as if nothing's wrong. That's what's psychotic. Mm. And that's what gets you killed. Right. You must recognize the circumstances and act accordingly. That's That's sanity. Ooh, man, that, that, that's powerful, brother. Well said. But well, let me ask, ask you this, and this is for the listening audience. Right. Yeah. How do you keep your, 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 your lust for life, your, your happiness, your, your, your enjoyment, your vigor in the midst of all this chaos? Appreciating the simple things let me just say the simple things but appreciation we don't need a slab we don't need a water a hundred dollar a water a dollar bills so we can make it rain on a naked woman we don't need that in order to enjoy life we don't need to be full of this intoxicant and full of that alcoholic beverage we don't need that to enjoy life. Because the second you get locked up, the first thing you start thinking about is green grass. <laughs> really? yeah. You start thinking about green trees and yeah. blue skies. Come on. And right now it's all around you for free, all day long, every day. Right. But the problem is we're not appreciative. Mm. Yeah. It's your sanity. By being yourself. Right. Uh, yeah. 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 Hey, you right. Yes, yeah, soon as you get locked up, you start thinking of all the freedom. Just going to the store, you know, anything. What? You, you're a beast when you're in there. You're you going to do this, you're going to do that, and, you know, you just can't wait, wait, watch me when I get out. Watch me. And then a lot of us get out start doing the same thing because we don't appreciate it anymore. We might mm. kiss the ground as soon as we touch down. The next thing you know, we clown. I don't mean I did mean around. But <laughs> that's what happens. All right. We forget all about what we have at our disposal. That the God gives us as a gift, you know, these gifts of life. And start thinking about the material, the gold calf. Mm. Well, then, what? Well, but, true. But let me ask you this, though, brother. Yes, sir. Our only semblance of what we thought heaven on earth was was what the slave master had. You know, we we in the wood shack. He sipping on some some jubilee or something, and 
eating fine foods, dressed nice. You know, we got the horse and buggy cleaned up. You know what I mean? He got the lady and whatnot. And we like, damn, that's what him looked like. That's what peace looked like. Soon I'm going to give me some money and do it just like that. You know, that was the only example a lot of it had because we couldn't remember uh-huh. what we did and how we parlayed in Egypt. Uh-huh. You know? Well, ironically, brother, that's what we did. They, they're copying us. They're right. doing what we were once doing on a small level. Though. They can't, they haven't, they ain't built the pyramids yet. Right. They're just kind of figuring it out, and it's all over because they went about it so terribly wrong. You know, and uh, they got civilization from us. So, yes. Yeah, we know how to appreciate the gold and the finery. That's that has its place, and that comes after. Just like things come out of the earth, it comes from living the life. It comes from being ourselves. It comes from being a natural, civilized, righteous human being, and appreciating the gifts first. Right. Wow. Once you can do that and you can master that, all things will be added on to you. The scripture ain't lying to you. Right. Try it. That's right. That's right. That's right. We we so we we're so not ready, and we should be ready. But that first step, I don't know if it's peer pressure, and we think it's weak to do the experiment of being upright or afraid to be the first one to do what's right when you're in the midst of of majority that's doing other than right. Some don't want to seem like they're the oddball or feel like they don't fit in in the culture and what everybody else is doing. So when you stand up and say, well, you know, I want to be upright, clean up my life, uh, you know who do you think you are, and and what not, you know, you know it. I I attest that to the power of the media, because uh, 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 somebody told me one time that when the movie Chef, when Chef first originally came out, the next day you seen black leather jackets everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Influence, right? I remember. When the movie Colors came out, and you know, wasn't no gangs down uh-huh. here, and then you start seeing blue and red bandanas, like you know, what the hell is going on? You know what I mean? Right. Why are we letting? Why are we imitating life after art or after what someone else created in their mind? Put it on the screen on how they would like to see us act and behave, and then uh, and then we follow it. And I remember you saying on one one podcast, all the devil going to say is, I just made the call. All right. All right. Well, they figured out that imagination is more powerful than anything. Is what they give you in your mind is what you're going to act out on. They give you a false perception of yourself that you low down, you gutter, you gangster, you're a damn fool, you're a clown, you're going to do that. And then they got you. You pipe around into the penitentiary and link you there for real. In real life. Just on the basis of survival. By the time you get out of here, you're going to be different. You're not going to be the same. Right. So, they are, they are, this is, this is social engineering at, at, uh, at our expense. Right. Right. Yeah. You get the corn out of the, out of, out of the fish's fish mouth. Right. You know what I'm saying? Fact. Yeah, they just put that picture, you know, your imagination, your image, it's, it's, your mind makes these images. And when you rear your children, you want to put the best images in your child's mind. Right. So that your child, once their child gets mature, really don't need you except for support and reinforcement. But by the time that child reaches a certain age, they already got a purpose that you didn't give them. You put those pictures, those positive Images in their mind as, as, as breadcrumbs to get to the goal. Right. But that imagination is what make or break you. 
I mean, if you can imagine yourself dying at a certain age because you know the lifestyle that you're living, you most likely will fulfill that promise to yourself. <laughs> That's right. And, and, and I'm glad you said that, brother, because that is the key to ending poverty. That's the key right there, what you just stated, simply because you put things of value within your child's life, but not only your child's lives, within the parent life as well. And those things of value will turn into value. But if you put in negative uh, images, then it's going to produce negative results. In the mind, and that that is so profound. That's true, That's true bro. That's, the way it works. That's how the game works, man. And see, we think so. What what so what what what, what Satan does is we think that oh man, I got to get out of poverty. He said, "Oh, you want to get out of poverty? Then they go to strip a pole, or okay, you know, go rob this." Or he's saying that's that's the means out of a bad situation. When no, actually, that's that's the means to keep you, to put you deep and deep into the hole. It's a game. It's a game. It's a game. It's a game. But now, and, and, I'm so now, brother, I'm about to say now, one of the things that I charge some of these churches with is when you got youth in your church, one night you have to teach them on budgeting and managing money. Just we're in a capitalist society because they're not going to teach that in the schoolhouse. You know, somebody got to teach the youth and, you know, somebody got to start it off, teach the youth and also teach them not only just money management, but how capitalism actually works. So they can get an understanding and because and it's like you said about imagination. Sometimes you have to visually see yourself in that position, doing certain things. Mm. You know, so see yourself, see the value in yourself. I'm proud of the brothers uh, in the NBA of the NBA that's taking the boycott right against the violence against us like that, and making a point that hey, we don't want to continue being your entertainment if you can't respect us as human beings. Right, and it goes for all of us. Right. So, like you just said, we gonna make it. We gonna make you feel it in your pocketbook. Right. What's so funny is, if you get into a confrontation with a police officer, and it doesn't become what we've been seeing a lot of lately, murderous. If you make it away from that situation, and you pick a pen up and a piece of paper or a form that's called a complaint that hurts that cop more than anything that you can come on imagine. come on that police officer does not want a single drop of ink on his name attributed to him right. why because it affects his raise right. it affects his promotion come on it affects his future ambitions in some way one way or the other that cop does not want that on his name but, of course, he knows that we're not thinking like that. Right. He knows, because we don't even ask him, well, what is your name? I can't see your badge number, sir. Right. I know you're taking me to jail. I'll go to jail. But I need to know what your badge number is. I need to know what your name is. And I need to know who your sergeant is, you know. Right. You need some information on this guy. And once you start talking like that, you might even see a little relief come up out of him. He don't love you. He don't like you. He hates you. He want to kill you. But he's interested in his own uh, uh, interests. Right. And that's how we got to start thinking. Uh, spend money with your own. Our purchasing power is the immediate power. We don't understand. But what kind of power we got? We ain't got no power. We can't do shit. Spend your money with your own. Right. That's immediate power. That's right. But, right. We we have to determine what our own is. And our own is, can we say, m- melanated people? We can say 
Jefferson, that lady people. If I were on the, if I were on the, 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 the Jamaican that got the store. Black people. Black folk. We can't, we gotta stop. Black right, black folk. We gotta stop separating black folks. Uh, tri- we gotta stop yes, the right. tribalism. Right. That's right. You know? Because the more we tribalize, the less effective we are. Right. But, uh, they, you got us over. That's how they do us. Colonizers. Colonizers. North side bro. against the south side. Come on. South side against the west side. Come on. Blues against black. The 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 against the back. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Just don't just nobody together. No. Everybody got a problem with the next one. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's right. That's that's weakening the fiber. Yeah. Right. You. Of the fabric. You know what I'm saying? Right. You you black, but you not my kind of black. Well, what kind of black is black? What is it? What, <laughs> what kind? Of, what, what black are you? Right. You know, what you call your black? Yeah. Wait, what you okay. Right. Uh, but the but the the, the common denominator is black. Right. That's right. That's what we need to get right. That's what you we got to get saying? right. Right. And, and when we say black, we including the Moors, the Aswas, the Hebrew Israelites across the board. All of that. All of that. All of that. Yeah. Because before the Arabs and everything else, the Egyptians, it was black. Right. So we need to get out there, man. That was something that was put into the conscious, the conscious rise of our people, just like they went and put DS in the Bible. Right. They know we got access in our hands on a conscious thought. Right. So they got to inject some BS into it. Mm. Just like a ship with a rudder. All you got to do for that huge ship is just turn the rudder a little bit and get you on course. And that's what they did. Seek the absolute truth. Right. Right. That's right. There is an absolute truth. Right. If there wasn't, then why are we even talking about truth? There is mathematics. We can count. You can put numbers together and the equal will mean something. And if you can trust that. There right. is an absolute truth. Stop playing with this side branch knowledge. Right. Because you're only weakening your own power. Right. Be- yeah, because you got to realize, look. You dealing with a wise enemy. He he studies all of it. He knows all about you. He knows all about all us. About all about us. And yeah. so he knows how to come and interject a seed of doubt right in the middle of your thought, as you stated, to turn the course right. Right. It's a fact. He has scientists. When he make when he make the when he is the writer behind the movies, he's sitting down with scholars and scientists to make sure it gives off that perfect effect that they that their intentions are set up set upon. He knows how to do this, right? Mm-hmm. And we have to be just as wise with the mathematics because we can counter everything that he does because he's on the outside looking in and giving his perception on what he think it is. But we actually lived it and know it so we can say, no, nah, that's not it. But we don't, have, we don't have to tell him, though. We can let him keep grasping for straws. You know? Well, we got to tell him. We got to tell him. That's right. Yeah. You know? Go get in your house. We don't come in your house telling you what to do in your house. You can't come to our house telling us what to do. Ain't nothing wrong with that. We got to get past that being ashamed of checking the enemy. Saying, hey, no, you can't come in the house. Right. Because why? Well, it's it's my house. I don't want you to come in. What else is it? You know why? Why I got to answer to you? Right. We say black lives matter, and they come along and say all black lives matter. No. We say black lives matter. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You can say all lives matter. You can do what the hell you want. You can say white lives matter. Yeah. I agree. But when we say black lives matter, we don't need you to tell us what that means. Right. Fact. That's right. Because they still see us as boy and girl. Thank you. You know. Property. Property. And children. That's right. Oh, man. And you- as soon as we recognize the taxonomy of 
then we wrong. Right. You know, we're not wrong. We natural. We real. That's right. And we respect yours, you respect ours. Come, as simple as that. Simple as that. S- simple as that. That's why I don't and, and back to the young 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 killer, seventeen year old young killer who was reared by his parents up under that racist ideology, right? Uh-huh. He has no clue or idea one on what it's like to be black in America or black experience. So a lot of times people with that mindset they go off of what they believe to be or what someone else said but they, they're not smart enough to go and do the homework, to go and vet the information, to go see for yourself if this is what it is before you become a pawn and get, get he getting he, he getting his dumb ass locked up for murder, hopefully. But they're not intelligent enough to say, well, let me do an experiment and see if all blacks are what these uh, racist teachings say. All right. Because if they was to do that, right, and they find out, okay, well, yeah, you do got some intelligent blacks. Okay, you had the, the first president, which you know might not agree with his, with his politics, but he was intelligent compared to what we have in the White House today. Look at his wife. We can name a lot of intelligent brother, Minister Farrakhan. So when you have all those examples, and that still don't change their mind, then that deep-seated hate goes further than ideology. It goes into their very nature and being. And one day we have to go ahead and deal with that. And the reason I say that is because so many people will come on television and say, black people at that now, we got to love everybody. We, 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 we have to we have to forgive uh them for what they just did uh we can't go out there and 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 ride and and and, and have a violent protest cuz we don't want them to think we're a certain way and it's like if you understood that some will see you as their natural enemy strictly because of the melanin in your skin, then you can put away all the what ifs and just deal with what it is. Yes, sir. You know? What's interesting is he's so full of entitlement. He knows that he can do this and still be arrested and go to jail. But yet an unarmed black man breaking up a fight can peacefully walk to his car and get shot several times in his back in front of his children in broad daylight. That's how deep and that's how deep set privilege is in this young generation of uh, Caucasians. Yeah, because how many white men been shot by the police? And I'm talking about, I done seen it where they chase the police, they fight the police, they cuss them out, they go for the police gun, they hit the police, and yet they able to come home. I've seen it. I've seen it. So now that is a failure on the part of the parents. But you know, the sins of the fathers will be visited upon the children. And if that's the road that they send their children down on, then they don't give a damn about the consequences that their children are going to have to face. Because if we can't exact justice, you know that God, your maker, got some justice for you. Don't you? You know what I'm saying? But yeah, you know, but you know though, brother Moore, I don't do we believe do 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 majority of us really believe in God? 
No. <laughs> Hell no. Don't believe in God. We don't believe it. They don't believe in God. You don't believe in God. No. Yeah, you don't believe in God. That's right. If, if I fill my gas tank up halfway, I believe I'm making it to the other side of town. That's, I don't want to think about it no more. Right. I just get in the car and go. Right. You know what I'm saying? I trust that. That's right. People don't people don't act like there is a God. Right. Because right. he said this, that, and the other. And he trashed Egypt. He, he, he crashed uh, Babylon. He thrashed Sodom and Gomorrah. But then people still want to do the same exact things that all those ancient destroyed cities did. Right. We don't believe in no God. Nah, we don't believe. Nah, we. Nah. nah, we don't think God gonna deliver us from this. That's why we worried about what the next man gonna do. And LeBron talking about we scared and afraid. Yeah, and, scared of? Aren't we supposed to be only afraid of God? Right. Yeah, we don't, we don't believe, believe in God, God. bro. Or, and, or right because we haven't been acquainted with God. We been acquainted with the slave masters, God that He taught us and painted white and whatnot. But maybe, maybe subtly, deep down in our subconscious or in our conscious mind, we know that that's not God, and we've been disconnected with the God that we knew. We that's know the, that. that's the only reason why we be in this predicament and getting done the way that we're doing, because we haven't acquainted ourselves with the real God. Right, and so how would we know unless we had a teacher? Right. And the honorable Elijah Muhammad, one of his main lessons is accept your own and be yourself. be yourself they don't want to accept their god and they don't want to be themselves and that is the big problem how can another people respect you and give you the love you think you uh deserve from them if you can't even accept your own and be yourself who are you Right. I'm going to have respect for something that I don't even know what it is. Right. You don't even know yourself. You know. Right. You're making me work too hard. I got a life to live. You know. Right. Come on, man. Laying yeah. down on the floor like a mat. I got to go. I have to step on you. Mm. That's the way we put ourselves. That's the position we get into. And there's nothing pretty. It's always feeble. This 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 master slave relationship is ugly in the eyesight of God. It's going to end. I'd love for it to end sooner than later. Wow. We have the opportunity to end it as soon as we uh, accept our own and be ourselves. Bro. Accept your own and be yourself. Now, before we get out of here. We're going to, the, the, the picture, and this is the picture of the young man, 17-year-old, who uh, shot the two people in Kenosha, Wisconsin, during the protest of uh, Jacob Blake, who is paralyzed now, shot in the back after a police officer, grabbed one hand grabbing his shirt, putting him back, and then shooting him in his back, right? Now, here go a, 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 a dopey, dumpy, looking white boy with glasses on holding a rifle with some American uh, Crocs on, right? And that, that's the picture that you know, is that's sur surfacing around social media. But I brought that up just to show you all. You don't have a, a profile of a white supremacist racist that wish to kill you. Whatever image that you have in your head, that's wrong. Because this guy, he got glasses on, dope. Your mind think he wouldn't harm a fly, but yet he still did. You got something that look like Dylan Roof. You got something like Charles Manson. You got something like White Jesus. And would still inflict the same pain and cause the same harm through their racism. And no matter which uh, image you have in your mind of what uh, a, a white supremacist racist look like. You know, it's across the board. Just pick one. 
is what I'm saying. And they could be a white supremacist. It could be in the suit. He can be in some jeans and a t-shirt. You know, be in a cowboy hat. If have a bandana around his head. Sometimes, sometimes he can have some black skin. You know what I mean? And watching the damn, watching some of the ones that was at the Trump speaking on Trump behalf, and hearing some of the stuff that's coming out of some of these uh, brothers and sisters' mouths. But sometimes I do believe though that they using that as a cover because. They feel like they defeated and they feel like this the winning team. So I'm jumping ship now and riding with the winning team. And you have that because, once again, they don't have any faith within themselves and they don't believe in a real, actual God. Sad, brother. But, yeah, brother Mark, man, I really appreciate you sharing this subject with me and, and with the listening audience because you had some key points that will make you think and make you reevaluate your positions. And the, the most important thing that was said was put positive images in your children's mind. I mean, you can't, you, 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 you can't say it no better. Yes, sir. Look. Praise be to Allah. It's always a pleasure. Yes, sir. But the verbal pick radio, we are.